Share something today, Mike? Yes, share your testimony. Okay. Share something. Mario, yes. blue yes. mic? Yes. Oh. Nothing like putting people on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> 8,000 words of Woo! 8, <laughs> words. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So uh, I think it was about a month ago that I was up here. And um, I was sitting up front and just watching uh, deliverance happening in there. I saw the Holy Spirit working. And, um, you know, I just, I was talking to the Lord. I was asking, Lord, well, what do you say? What should I do? So he got me to stand up and come up before everybody in the church. And, and uh, you know, Pastor Heather was up here delivering. And uh, the anointing was all over here, in this, up in this area. This, the presence of God was here. People were being delivered before I even came up. So I just felt the trueness of God's love right happening right there in front of us. I was like, Lord, there's something in me, and whatever it is that's holding me back from being alive in you, you need to take it off me. You need to release me from it. It's been sitting there. It's a heart. It was like a, um, a shrumble. Something that, you know, you, you have so strong in our bodies that we, it's a habit, something that this, we just go to. I was like, Lord, what is it? You know, and it was all the, the pain and sufferings I had as a child going through, through the abuse and everything else that's happened to me. And God, in, in the presence and, and in his anointing, just freed me during, during that deliverance. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. I, 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 all I remember is, I mean, I, I think I look back at it one time and I saw myself, I don't remember coughing, I don't remember doing that. What I do remember is this feeling this lighter than, than a feather. Oh, I felt I was floating. And I haven't shared this with pastors, but I was... 
lifted up into the throne room, throne room, throne room of God. It was just we just you're in awe. You can't move. You're just <laughs> the glory of God is so bright. It's so bright. I can I can only say that in the Word of God, where it talks about it, is when Jesus was transfigured on the mountain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it was it was brilliant, beautiful, and I was just in awe in the presence of God. Yes. And I know that when you see heaven, when you see God's throne room, and this is our promise and our hope to Amen. be there, Amen. that we have been freed from things that the enemy focuses on, and He delivered me from focusing on my past Amen. issues, yes. uh, not letting me letting those things hinder me. That's right. right. I don't want to be hindered. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to be hindered anymore. Right. And those things in our past are the things that hinder us from walking in the glory that God has given to each and every one of us. And you're doing worship today, just, you know, just God was showing me how unique He's made each and every one of us. Yes. He put thought into you, into us. Yes. Every hair on our head, He put thought into it. That's right. He didn't just say, okay, here. No, He looked at you and said, I'm making you, I'm designing you to be. Just be more than what you think you are today. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. much more. more. And I was more. like, oh, how can I do this? To you? In the midst, I was like, what do you want me to do? What is my calling? What is it that you want me to do? Yes. You know, he doesn't want me to sit in the past. No. no. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah. Praise that's God. Right. That's where I, I need deliverance yes. from. I needed that deliverance. Yes. And I know there's so more because you know what? Right after that, the enemy attacked me hardcore. Yeah. Oh, try to come back in. <laughs> yeah, trying to draw me back in there. I mean, twice as hard. It may, I wouldn't even yeah. say seven times harder than it was before. It was this anger, frustration after that. I was like, wow. And, you know, praise God, my beautiful wife, Marla, was just there. Amen. She's like, remember Amen. who you are. She's reminding me Truth. of who God says. Yeah, yeah. Reminding me of God's promises. Yeah. And at home, we would sit there and we start worshiping and praying and finding time with God and just, you know, reaching out to pastors. I need yes. you to pray for me right now because this is like hitting me right now so mm. hard. Because those things are strongholds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember, those things are strongholds, yeah, and we right. need to be delivered of those. But the yeah. enemy knows that those are the things he was getting you with. He's going to try to attack you with it again and again and again. That's right. He'll try. But Jesus. Yes. Yeah. But Jesus. And you know what? We have each other. We have our beloved. Right. We're supposed to lean yes. on each other. And God says, that you are my family. You are my brothers. Yes. You are my Amen. sisters. Yes. You are my mother. Uh-huh. And so I just yes. lean on each other. Ooh, that's powerful. This time. So, man, I just praise God right now. He's freeing us with these yes. things that held us captive for so long. Amen. I just, I just know right here. Come on up here. There's an anointing up in this place, guys. Come on. So praise God. It's praise so God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you. Oh, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise I'm going to blow my nose. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. It's powerful right there. <laughs> You can go watch that online, too. <laughs> There's something wrong with me that my grandkids call on video chat. I'll do things like, you know, <laughs> just weird stuff. <clears throat> it's Rachel, right? Yeah. Rachel, you can take a chair and sit in the hallway there. Any chair you want. You know, we're, we went from a big building and a greedy landlord to a little tiny building. And we don't have the kids' room anymore. We don't have the fellowship room. We don't have the kitchen anymore. We don't have all these stuff. So we're going to kind of have to make do. So Jesus be patient. Jesus uh, don't get religious on things that are happening. Never. In Genesis, we hear that Adam and Eve fell. The Apostle Paul says, through one man, all mankind fell. That, that word means we were separated from God. So you didn't do anything in your life. You didn't commit any heinous crime or sin to be separated from God. You were born into it, right? right. Amen. So to be separated from God is no guilt or shame, right? Right, right. The first person we see God coming and interacting with after that is... Abram. Yeah. You know what Abram didn't have? The Ten Commandments. He, did not. he didn't have the law. 
God with Abraham says, Abraham, I'm coming and making a covenant with you based on trust, or the word we use, faith. So God's first commandment to Abraham was, I want you to leave your region, your city, your town, and your family. Now that's a metaphor for when we get born again, God doesn't want us to stay in the same mindset, in the right. same bad habits, in the right. same brokenness, in the same Freedom. addictions. Freedom. He wants us to move. And so Abraham got up and kind of followed God. He brought some of his family with him. Hmm. God says, fine. And then he makes a covenant with Abraham about what God is going to do. But Jesus steps in on Abraham's behalf. So it's really Jesus stepping in for mankind and the Father and Jesus <laughs> making this covenant Amen. of restoration. So... God would show up and talk to Abraham. Who does that sound like? Jesus. Adam in the garden. Mm -hmm. God would show up and talk. Mm -hmm. So it was a relationship, wasn't it? Amen. Do you know there's no relationship in the law? No. no. How can there be? There's no relationship. Because in the any anything where it's a mixed message, you're focusing <clears throat> on you trying to be, trying to be, trying to be, trying to be. And your focus is on you. With Abraham, all the focus was on God. Yeah. God is my provider. God is my shield. God is, it's all, it's, it's God. So Abraham was a relationship. The law was no relationship with God. It was man puffing himself up and saying, look, I can be, I can do really good. Look at me. You know, alcohol has never touched my lips. <laughs> So, you're the biggest self-righteous person I've ever seen in my life. So it's like, which sin are we going to talk about? Right, amen. God wants a relationship with you. Amen. But he needs you to move from your own place, your old mindset, your old hurts, your old pains. Do you know, some of you guys are the worst poker players in the world. I can look at your mug and I can see so much. Wow. You're stuck. Your facial feature says right now I'm thinking about what a sluggard and a horrible man and, and all the trials and tribulations I've gone through and everything that's bad that's happened to me. Hmm. God says, I left that place a long time ago. Yeah, I know. When are you? Yeah, come on. Heather would say, Larry, could you go take the trash out? And I would literally lose my mind. <laughs> Mom, Heather, I'm watching TV. And she's going, Heather, Larry, you're, you're always watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> but as a young kid, in my mind, in my perception... I'd be watching the Waltons, and Mother would come in and says, Larry, dump the trash. And I'd have to go to all the bathrooms in the kitchen and take all the trash out or whatever. And it was right in the middle of some big trial on the mountain about the sawmill or Grandpa or John Boy's first girlfriend or whatever it was. And so I reacted to Heather because of a, an offense, real or imagined, when I was eight years old. So some of you are still walking in the four and five and six and seven year old kids. Yes. And so the enemy has come in through that and built a strong hold and you're sad and you're depressed and you think about every day how bad it was and why did that happen and God, why did you let that happen? And then you feel guilt and shame because maybe you were a partaker, maybe you did some of your own little monkey business and you are totally useless for the kingdom. Mm. And you have a really pathetic relationship with God. It's all be <laughs> free. God wants relationship. Yes, he does. His son died so you could be separated from the old man. Amen. The old man is everything that's negative in you or you were. It's gone. Amen. Yeah, but Larry, I'm still struggling. No, that's this is God. God lives outside of time. So 
when he created you, he already saw you saved and, and walking in perfection. Mm -hmm. Even though you're all jacked up today. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is, he looks at you and he sees you already separated from your old stuff. And Jesus' blood has covered all the old sins. The sin or the, what you perceive as sin, you're doing now. And the ones you're going to do tomorrow. But Paul takes it to a whole other realm. He says, you died to Mr. Law. So you could marry another. So I died to the law. I've been divorced from the law so I could marry Jesus and become the bride of Christ. Amen. Why do you still look at yourself as in a negative or positive way? When you look at yourself and say, I'm good or I'm bad, you are living under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. You're still living under the law. In Abraham and God's relationship, it was, do you trust me, Abraham, do this. Right. Totally different paradigm of relationship. I was free, I don't know why I said that, but it was cool. It was good. Okay, this is part three of a vision I had. Uh, right after the first of the year and it's kind of a mandate it's kind of a the, the the thing that god wants us to do i don't have a church that the mission of here is not to evangelize the world god hasn't called me to do that i have a prophetic gift but i don't give up get up every sunday and i say well this is what's happened in the government this is what's happening here whatever <clears throat> my prophetic gift usually has to do with individuals personally The Lord says, set my children free and build them up into the knowledge of who they are in Christ. So even though I might get a word about who is the real president, yeah. <laughs> who's, who's not running things, how bad the flu is, how many people are really getting sick, you know, all those kind of things. He, but that's not my mainstay. Come on. My mainstay Come on. is how Come do on. I help you yep. be everything that God has called yes, you amen. to be? Amen. 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 Yes. All right. Amen. So fire, water, and gifts of trees, or gifts and then trees. So this is part three. <clears throat> when it comes to fire, and I'm going to do a real fast uh, recap. God is referred to as a God of fire. Jesus has shown his fire. The Holy Spirit has shown his fire. Angels are shown as fire of God or fire. Fire is also in judgments. Fire is also in sacrifice. In the New Testament, fire is also Jesus burning up the chaff in your life. Now, if you're a mixed message pastor, you get up and teach that as people getting saved and not getting yeah. saved are going to hell. That's not what that scripture is about. It's about Jesus and those who are already believers. He is taking you and cleaning you and cleaning the junk out of you. Okay? It's not a salvation scripture. It's sad that so many people in the church just get giddy when they think somebody's going to hell. That's a self-righteous person. That's somebody under the law. When they look at somebody and say, oh, you're filthy sinner. Uh, uh. You should be going, oh my gosh, how do I help that person? Amen. But see, that law-minded or that self-righteous condemns them. Because if I can show how bad you are, then it makes me feel better about me. Yeah, that's right. Amen? Amen. So, fire, in our case, is going to be fire of judgment is going to be against the demonic realm. And those who have totally given themselves over 100% to the enemy. Right. And that's God's judgment. You know, he talks about, I give them over to a yeah. reprobate heart. Yeah. That's him. That's not my call. Mm -hmm. I can never look at a person and judge them on if they're saved or not saved. I cannot do that. That's God's job. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, that's what the, so the fire for a Christian is a good thing. Nothing to be afraid of. Amen. Then I saw... So I saw fire over all Southern California. That's how this started. And the fire was burning for a while. Then I saw a wave of water come in and cover Southern California. And the water in the Bible is a reference to the Holy Spirit. Water is used in cleansing your Jewish traditions. 
the, the ceremonial baths and washing and everything. And water also represents life. Jesus says, I will cause rivers of living water to burst forth from where? Your belly is where your belief system is at. This is your knower. This is your believer. Jesus loves you. And you go, yeah, okay, I guess. That's head knowledge. Jesus loves me. Sometimes he just sits around and thinks about me. Isn't that crazy? See, that's my knower. That's my knower going on. This is what you know, I know. This is what I believe. In. Amen? Amen. So after the water came over Southern California, I saw little people start popping up. Crying out to heaven, crying out to God. They weren't, uh, they weren't unsaved people. They weren't people hollering out to get saved because after I saw them crying out, I saw in my little vision like B-52 bombers flying over Southern California and they started dropping things. But the plane, the planes were not planes, they were literally angels. And they started dropping these little baskets on parachutes. And they and the Lord says, Those are spiritual gifts I'm dropping out. I love that. Now, the church that I grew up, if God gives you a spiritual gift, we praise God. But otherwise, shut up and sit in the back of the church. <laughs> Paul says, desire and pursue the higher gifts. If I'm going to pursue a gift, that means God is willing to give it to me. Because he's not going to tell me to pursue something I can't achieve. So if Paul says, go after these things. And we have reference in... The two prophets, and I always get their names messed up. Older prophet has the younger prophet. He's mentoring. It's time for him to Elijah leave. And, and he, what is it? Elijah, Elijah and Elisha. Now, why would you write that? It's like Bob and Bob. <laughs> so, God, I think he's like, come on. It's a different name. And what yeah. has... <laughs> so, so, the first prophet, his time was up. And it was time for him to pass the mantle. Oh, this is but what he did was he kept telling the younger one, go away, go back, go back. And he would run off and the younger one kept chasing him until at the end he saw him going up in a chariot. He goes, I want your mantle. Yeah, and and he let it go. Yeah. So that means the younger prophet pursued mm -hmm. and not only asked for the older man, he says, I want a double Woo! portion. Yeah. Double, Lord. Yeah. So in scripture, there's double. seven miracles the first one did. And there's 14, the second one. Yeah. So that's an example that we can pursue a gift from God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So spiritual gifts. And I taught on all the spiritual gifts. I went over all that. And after the spiritual gifts came down and the individual got a hold of them, I saw trees spring up Amen. and cover Southern California. So we're going to talk about trees today. Do you ever think you'd go to church and talk about trees? No. <laughs> Me neither. I've talked about stuff up here I never thought in a million years I'd talk about. Maybe that tree was started. Ah. <laughs> trees. Trees are a very interesting subject in the Bible. God uses metaphors a lot. Uh, the first time we see trees in Genesis 1, <clears throat> verse 11 through 12, and this is the New American Standard. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation. Plants yielding seeds and fruit trees on the earth bearing fruit according to their kind with seed in them. And it was so. The earth produced vegetation, plants yielding seeds according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seeds in them according to their kind, and God saw that it was good. Sometimes I say bad things about Christians. Hmm. Like, it's like, no, Larry, he's just talking about trees. Everything in the Bible is poetic. It's all metaphors. There's going to be some story about a tree or a sheep or a goat that is going to apply to me. 
Do you get up in the morning and look in the mirror and go, well, I'm one bad looking sheep, man. <laughs> no, it's a, it's, it's a metaphor. It's a typology that God is using to talk about you. Right. Okay. Amen. So in the trees, the Lord said, look at this. He says, trees produce fruit. Yes. So Paul says, what fruit are you producing in your life? Right. And he also said, in you is the ability to plant seeds for Amen. something to grow up just Amen. like you. Amen. Amen. So I teach grace. So what should be the fruit in my life? Grace. I'm teaching grace and I'm showing grace. Mercy. But what about the seed? Love. That means I should be producing people who are walking in grace Amen. and understanding the gospel of grace. Amen. So I should produce after my kind. Amen. I have a prophetic gift. So I'm always tuned to anybody with a prophetic gift to help them grow in their gift. God has called me to be a, a theologian. I love that word. <laughs> So that I can explain to people when they look at the scripture and say, well, no, that's how the King James translated. When we go back to Hebrew and Greek, it says this. So I can explain the word. Right. So I should then produce people who can say, hey, you know what? The word sin in the New Testament 90% of the time is a noun. It's not talking about an action. It's talking about a position. Mm -hmm. See, once I teach that to somebody, they're going to now produce seeds and fruit according to that. That's right. Amen. So I need to multiply myself. What kind of fruit did Pharisees produce? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What kind of seeds came out of a Pharisee? They produced another Pharisee. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen what we sometimes call a generational curse where grandpa had this issue, dad had that issue, I have this issue, my son has this issue? Those are seeds that are being produced out of your hurt and pain. And that's why deliverance is so monumental and important. That's right. There's not a curse on you. You can't be cursed. But see, the demonic stronghold here, once it gets this one all trained, it'll jump to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And you'll see it angry. Mm -hmm. Love of money. Or good ways. Super hard worker. Very loving. And all of a sudden, this, these traits are handed down, okay, be good or bad. Yeah. So when he's talking about trees, he's talking about us. We are the trees. Amen. Okay? Are we following? Amen. Okay. So, I need to be producing fruit that lines up with God's will yeah. and God's kingdom principles. Spirit fruit. So if I'm in this other mindset of a mixed message, I come out and I condemn. I point out faults. I show you your sin. If I'm in the, 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 the love of God, if I'm following the footsteps of Jesus, I'm showing you how forgiven you are, how accepted you are, how righteous you are, how redeemed you are. So I need to be producing that fruit in my life and this church should be producing that fruit yes so i don't ever want to get up and condemn anybody or make no. anybody feel bad amen and no, if i amen. have that was the old larry he's died we buried him in the back parking lot so this is the new model larry <laughs> which walks in love amen <laughs> in psalms 1 verse Two and three of the Passion Translation. His, now if you, you've heard this scripture a lot of times, but I'm going to do it in the Passion and not the King James. His passion is to remain true to the word of I am, meditating day and night on the true revelation of light. That scripture in the King James is, I meditate day and night on the law of God. Okay? As a New Testament Christian, am I to meditate on the law of God? No, I've been separated from it. Amen. I'm dead to the law. You want to know where a pastor's at on Sunday morning if he teaches out of the Old Testament all the time? 
I love, I go to church, but they're going to go right into the, they're going to go right into the Old Testament and bring something. I'm going, what in the world are you doing? If I'm going to go back and pull something out of the Old Testament, I better run it through the cross yes. before Amen. I teach that principle. Yes, right. Because I've seen some crazy stuff. Me too. Anyway, that's a different subject. <laughs> so, I, so in the Passion Translation, he's really tra changed it to a New Testament. His passion is to remain true to the Word of God. My passion is to be true to what the Word of God says about me as a New Testament Christian. Right. So who should I read and follow is the Apostle Paul. Well, Larry, I only do what the red letters say. <laughs> See, right now I'm a new person because I would say something derogatory about that person about their IQ or their intelligence. <laughs> In the Gospels, Jesus said, I've only come for the lost tribe of Israel. Mm -hmm. Who is Jesus talking to in the four Gospels? The He's talking to Jews under the law. So in a lot of his talking, he will show them the, the, the fallacy of keeping the law. He will point out to them, you're not keeping the law. You think you are, and then he'll show grace. So he was a Jew who kept the law and then died. So we are now law keepers done because we live in him. Amen. I'm not trying to do the law. The law is done. It's fulfilled. Oh, the law is not done away with. No, but I have been separated from the law. <laughs> Of Moses. I know I was never part of the law of Moses. Okay? So my thing is I need to be stay true to the word I am, meditating day and night on the true revelation of light. In the old covenant it was the law. The new revelation is the cross. Amen. Who am I in Christ? Here comes the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. God. And we get up on Sunday, you filthy sinners, we need to get the sin out of the church. Wait, okay. I, I'm not, I, I barely graduated high school. If Jesus took away the sin of the world, why are we in church talking about sin? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, you're one of them filthy grace teachers. People can just go do what they want to do. Clue, they're already doing what they want to do. <laughs> Paul makes a statement. The law came to stir up sin. Do we get that? So when your daddy said, Larry, don't you be a smoking. And I went out and found my friend and we bought a pack of Marlboro and I tried to smoke that bad boy. Why? Because that law came in. Larry, don't put anything in the light socket. <laughs> I did that. I literally dropped the knife in the, in, in the ice in the socket of a lamp and blew everything in the house. Now, what kind of a crazy person is that? He told me, don't do it. <laughs> See, the purpose of the law was to show you it's impossible for you to be righteous. That's all it is. So once you get over that fact, I don't need the law anymore. Paul calls, called it the tutor. We had a tutor. But once we come into the revelation... We don't need the tutor anymore, do we? Yeah. And yet, there's so many of us still trying to... Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. How many in the course of the day do you go, oh, I, oh man, I messed up. Yeah. And you feel guilt and shame. Yep. You're under the law. That's me. You need a revelation of who you are in grace. Now, does that mean I do bad things? No, it means when I get angry at Heather for dumping the trash, I say, Lord... What is it in me that's right. reacting to her in that manner? And he yes. says, you have an offense towards your mother that you never got free of. Yes. Oh, yes. it has nothing to do with heaven. It has everything to do with me. So once I get that offense out, then I'm a happy trash dumper. <laughs> <laughs> nothing like running around at one o'clock in the morning taking trash to the curb. Yeah. <laughs> And I find every sticker, bump, and everything, because I'd run around with my little bear. Oh, ah, oh. <laughs> But see, when that offense is taken away, That's right, you yeah. see the world through a different filter. Amen. Yes. So he goes on in verse 3. He, the one who meditates on the Word, and for the New Testament, it's meditating on 
who I am in Christ and what truly happened at the cross, he, that person who understands that, will be standing firm like a flourishing tree. So are we trees? No, it's a metaphor. Yeah. Planted by God's design, deeply rooted by the brooks of bliss, bearing fruit in every season of life. He is never dry, never fainting, ever blessed and ever yeah. prosperous. Amen. But Amen. what is the condition Amen. for that? The condition is I understand who I am in Christ. Amen. Now in a mixed message church, it was get the sin out. So we were always trying to stop being bad and we never succeeded. That's, right. Amen. That's why we all look like we sucked on lemons before we go to church. <laughs> Let's all go into church and get a whooping. My dad would say, Larry, I need to talk to you. Oh, crap. Uh, God never does that. Lord, I need an anointing this morning to teach this. I got you. You're my vessel. Your job is to let me talk through you. Yes, amen. My job is not to be worthy for him to talk through me. Mm -hmm. I already am. Wink, wink. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I spend all my time trying to be worthy, what am I going to accomplish in the kingdom? Zero. Period. You're going to spend all day long trying to be worthy, trying to be good, and trying to yeah. be worthy. And every night you'll come home, put your head on the pillow, going, oh, I screwed up today. Yeah. Well, maybe tomorrow. There's going to come a point where you're going to say, screw it. I just might as well go out and do all those bad things that I think are bad. That's why you got Christians going out and just losing their minds. Yeah. Because they realize I can't fulfill that law. Right. It will kill you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So I can be a tree planted by rivers of life when I understand the word of God of who I am in Christ. Amen. In Genesis 26, 4 through 5, God is talking to Abraham now. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven. Who's going to multiply? God. God is. Oh, so it's not Abraham, is it? No. no. Oh. And will give your descendants all these lands. So who's going to earn the land? Descendants. Oh, nobody. It's going to be a gift. Yes, that's right. It's, right. Yeah. it's going to be a gift. And your and by your descendants, who are going to end up being the Jews and the writers of the law, uh, the writers of the book. All nations of the earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed me and fulfilled his duty to me and kept my commandments, statutes, and laws. What law was Abraham operating under when God talked to him? Between Abraham and Moses is a thousand years. Uh -huh. There was no law. God did tell him about sacrifice. But that was a prelude to Jesus. Do I need to go out and, and buy a lamb and barbecue in the backyard? No. But we got people doing that. We got people running around in Jewish robes and Jewish prayer cloths. And that's cute, but it has absolutely no power. Right. Everything under the law, like the prayer shot, it's an amazing study of all the knots, the colored thread of what it means. Yeah. Yeah. But all of it is fulfilled in Christ. Amen. So if I come up here and put a shawl over my head, I'm not more righteous. Or, right. oh, he, oh, right. he's, he's wearing the Levitical outfit. That's he really right. must know God. No. no. <laughs> See that I was keeping my mouth shut because I was going to say something <laughs> silly. <clears throat> so God said when we follow what God asks us to do. So what does that mean to a New Testament Christian? Real simple. A man comes to Jesus and says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Or what works must I do to inherit eternal life? He says, believe on the one who was sent. wasn't believe on Moses. It was believe on the one who is sent. So in Mark 16, it says, Those who believe in me and are baptized will be saved. Now that word believe has an interesting grammar attached to it. There's three things, and Bob's the expert on it. He's taught me everything I know. 
there's one part of the little grammar thing, and it, it means it either means ed like believed one time, or ing believing. So how much do, do I have to keep believing to be saved? It was one time. So I put faith in Christ one time, and I was born again. But it says those who believe will cast out demons. Well, it's not just believe one time. It's believing in Christ. So that is the growth. So some people think, well, I'm born again so I can go do this. They're going to run around and start trying to do something not knowing truly who they are. So you get saved. Now you go on a journey of figuring out who you are. And then God will have you do things. The worst thing in the world is a new Christian trying to go out and get everybody saved. You're going to screw it up because you don't know. Let your life be your testimony. And if need be, talk. Okay, that was something for somebody. So when you do these things, God says you will be a tree planted by a river of life. Now, to be a mighty oak like that, how many seasons must you survive? <clears throat> 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100. That means you're, you're planted. You're, you're planted. So that word planted is another word for established. Mm -hmm. If you're going to come to True Grace Church, you need to be planted. Well, I show up on Easter and Christmas. Okay, you're a tumbleweed. <laughs> You're never gonna, you're never, you're never gonna get it because you you come by. It's like a drive-by. You know, we're not Seven Eleven. We're a fine dining establishment. We're not McDonald's. If you live in town where Joe Green sleeps, what other thing? I'm, I'm trying to think of. <laughs> Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. You know, when you go to Ruth, you don't go in and say, I've only got 20 minutes. Can you hurry this up? No, it's an experience because that little piece of moo is going to cost you $60, $70. Yeah. So it's being established. So I'm going to come to True Grace Church. I'm going to get established. I'm going to get my identity. I'm going to figure out who I am. And then one day it'll be, okay, Lord, what do I, what do I add to the church? We were having a conversation with R1 and R2 last night. And they're not characters from a Star Wars movie. <laughs> it's the tale of the two Rachels. And, and it was like, me and Heather had made a point when we started the Bible study that it's grew to the church. I am not here to see how you can help my ministry. I am here to see how I can help you be everything you're called to be. So if you're in a church where they're always, okay, everybody needs to get on board with what the church is doing. Wrong mindset. Sorry. Paul said the gifts were for what? Building your ministry? No, it's for equipping the saints to be everything they're called to be. Not so everybody could row the boat so I could water ski after lunch. Is he done yet? Sorry. I digress. Wow, the time just flies when you're yakking. Psalms 52, verse 8. But as for me, I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. Amen. I trust in the faithfulness of God forever and ever. Amen. How do you become a green olive tree in the house of God? You need to have trust in God. Mm. When uh, I used to have somebody come up after church and say, Oh, you and Heather are so faithful. I think it was in big envelopes I put in the offering. But that comment was a sweet comment, but it made me look at who? You. you. Your faithfulness. Yeah. I would rather get up and say, you know how faithful God is? Jesus. Even yeah. in my stupidity, and even yeah. in my craziness, even in my misstep, yeah. God keeps leading me down the path, keeps lifting me up, keeps yeah. restoring me, yeah. keeps blessing me, as long as I keep my eyes on him. It's a little paradigm shift, but it changes the whole meaning of those comments, doesn't it? Yeah. <sighs> We're getting close, kids. 
Psalms 92, verse 12, the righteous person will flourish like the flourish like the palm tree, and he will grow into a cedar in Lebanon. Now, Lebanon is a hilly country uh, north of Israel, and Lebanon's really cute, it's about 10 inches wide. So you could be at the beach and, and drive for an hour and you're at 11,000 feet and go skiing. So they talk about the trees of Lebanon with these big, beautiful cedar trees up in the mountains. So he's saying a righteous person can flourish, flourish like a palm tree. A palm tree can live in the middle of a desert. But he says you can grow into being a mighty tree up on the side of a mountain. These are all metaphors for you. You are the tree. Hallelujah. But each one of these tells you a qualifier to be that tree, right? Amen. In Proverbs 3, blessed is a person who finds wisdom and one who obtains understanding, for her profit is better than the profit of silver. That's wisdom. And he's talking about wisdom of God. Yes. And her and her produce better than gold. She is more precious than jewels. And nothing you desire as compares with her. Amen. Long Amen. life is in her right hand. And her left hand are riches and honor. Amen. Her ways are pleasant and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life Hallelujah. to those who take hold of her. Yes. And happy are Amen. those who hold on to her. Yes, Amen. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the Holy Spirit. When you are led yes. by the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament says, yes. in all that you do, be led by the Spirit. Yes. Amen. From buying that greasy hamburger to how you spend your money. Yes. Or how you operate when somebody smashes your car or when something happens how am i going to react or respond to situations yeah. i'm going to walk in wisdom Amen. now when we have a stronghold there will be parts of your life that wisdom has no hold on yeah. and we won't talk about anything so that means when you get that stronghold tore down you can then grab wisdom in that area of your life that's yeah. not producing good fruit right Amen. right couldn't see it before. You two knock it off or I will send you to the back. <laughs> like two newlyweds up here giggling. And... Praise God. I'll get you guys. I only pick on those that I like. Oh, good. Steve, I got my eye on you. So, the first tree we looked at was those who follow and and go after the word of God. Amen. And it's going to be the grace. Mm -hmm. The second tree was the tree that trusted God. The third tree was the tree that walked in God's righteousness. Mm. How do I get God's righteousness? Jesus. Righteousness literally in the Greek means is as you ought to be. Yeah. So... In Adam, I was separated from God. In Christ, I am now one with God, or as I ought to be. And Paul says, put on the garment of salvation and then cover yourself with the robe of righteousness. It's not your righteousness, it's the right standing of Christ. Amen. So when I operate on this world, I don't do it as Larry. I do it as Jesus. <gasps> heretic, heretic, heretic. No, read your word. Oh, ignorant one. <laughs> you know why some people want to say, well, I'm just a poor little dirt bag? They don't want any responsibility. Oh, crap. Yeah. They right. want to sit back, well, I'm waiting on God. When God's going to do it. No, God wants you to get up and press in. Yes. Now, in timing, God wants you to wait on him. But there are some things he says, go get it. Go get yeah. it, son. Yeah. Grab a hold of it, apply it, embrace it. Mm. So we have to have some wisdom on what am I waiting for? You know, God said what he was going to do with this church, and we've been waiting 10 years. You know, I get up every Sunday, I look at how many people are here, and I'm going, okay, it ain't happening. And one day we were at dinner, and the Lord took a, a napkin I put over the plate. And he had me lift it up, and he says, I'll reveal you when the time is right. Because I needed to get some stuff. I'm not going to 
I needed to get some perfect. I needed to get some stuff. I need to get some revelation. I need to get some healing. Heather felt led to go to LA and watch Catherine Crick. I went out a couple times. I got an impartation. I love everything she does. Spot on. Good, right? She has like two and a half million followers on TikTok. She puts a video up and she gets a hundred thousand views. Just kind of casually, we've been watching her for the last couple weeks. And every message she gets up says, you know, there's this church in Redlands. And this pastor from Redlands who's twice as old as I am. And she's telling about us. And then people send us messages. Hey, I saw, I, I saw her talking about you on, on, on TikTok. I said, and, and all of a sudden I got people calling me. My phone in my office, which hasn't rang in 10 years, is rang every day now. Are, are you Pastor Larry that Catherine Crick talked about? Yeah. Can you do a deliverance over the phone? Yeah, okay. So who, now not in a million years would I think this little girl in L.A. would promote us. But see, that was God. Amen. Yes. We had plans. We were going to send mailers out. We were going to go door to door. and Yeah, that didn't work. So God is revealing. So, I mean, we had a lady last week who flew in from Arizona to spend two days with us. There are people here who've driven two hours. To come. You know, there's people here who've driven from the north end of L.A. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, it's not us. It's God saying, I will reveal you because two things. You're preaching grace and you're now walking in power. Yeah. Amen. 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 So the fourth thing was be led by the Holy Spirit. If I have a stronghold in my life, I am going to miss a lot of what the Holy Spirit is doing because I'm too busy thinking about me and my yes. owie. Yeah. Yeah. It's a distraction. Yep, that's a strategy again. Come here, Heather. This is our house. Heather's on her phone and she's ministering to people. Hey, honey, hey, honey, hey, honey, honey, you want to go to Honey, honey, honey. What am I doing to her? She's trying to minister to somebody and I am distracting her. That's what the enemy is. The enemy is always like, hey, 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 hey. You need to go, Aren't, shouldn't you be cleaning the dog? So the pool needs to be cleaned. Heather? <laughs> she did that yesterday. She did yesterday. <laughs> So sometimes the enemy has used me to distract Heather when she's doing something. And I got to go, oh, oh, wait, I didn't see that. I wasn't listening. I wasn't paying attention to what she was doing. And vice versa sometimes. So I need to be in tune to what the Spirit of yes. God is telling me to do. Yes. Yes. Should we do communion today? No, we're not going to do communion today. But I felt led to come up here and say what I did in the middle of the, the praise and worship. I don't just do that because, hey, I think it'd be really cool to interrupt the flow of the praise. No, the Lord says, get up and do this. I want to be led in everything that I do. Well, that means I have to get my stuff cleaned out enough that I can hear him. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I need, yeah. I need my, my pipes cleaned so I can hear him. Amen? Amen. In Luke 13, 18 through 19, I love this one. He was saying, what is the kingdom of God like? Now, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, that's the two words used in the New Testament. We always think it's a natural, physical kingdom. The word kingdom, when you go look it up in the lexicon, it says, doesn't mean a physical location. It means the authority to rule a kingdom. Amen. So John the Baptist says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. He was saying the authority of heaven is coming to earth. Woo! Glory. Change your mind. Quit trying to do the law. Because in Christ, the very authority of heaven is coming to earth. That's right. And you can be a partaker That's of right. that. That's right. See, but if we're still in that law, trying to be worthy, trying to get all the sin out, we ain't going to walk in authority. Right. right. We're going to disqualify ourselves. Well, you know, we better let Heather do that because she's the anointed one. I'm just the dirty slugger. You know, all those silly things that we used to think. I really thought Heather was going to be Joyce Myers and I was going to be in the background. Playing <laughs> golf. The Lord laughed. What is the kingdom of God like and to what shall I compare it? 
So now he's going to compare the kingdom of God, and he's talking to his disciples. It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you can get. It is teeny tiny, smaller than a grain of rice. It's like a mustard seed, which a man took and threw into his own garden. That means his own life. He took the authority of God and yeah. put it into yeah. his life. Yeah. And it grew. Oh, so the authority can grow. Amen. Yes. <laughs> you're two years old and your dad gives you a basketball and says <laughs> you're going to be a basketball star. And you just play with it. Uh, and you try to chew on it, right? You had a basketball. And then when you're five years old, you could bounce it and put it in the little hoop, right? And then you're 13 years old, you were making two-pointers. And in high school, you were shooting three-pointers. It was the same basketball. Mm. But you grew in how to use that basketball. That's right. Right. That's good analogy. So we have the... That was God. It just yeah, came to mind. Let's talk about. So God has given us authority, but we need to learn how to That's walk right. in He's that. Our coach. Yeah. 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 First place we learned that was in healing. Jesus never asked God to heal anybody. And yet we go to church, Lord, I pray right now that if you will, that you would touch Heather and heal her from the, well, what am I doing? Yeah. Asking for asking God. I'm asking for something God has given me. Right. Right. Jesus. Let's heal yes. In the name of Jesus, I speak life and healing into your body. Yes. Okay. From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. I curse the lie of the enemy that's attacking your ear right now in Jesus. Um, I am now operating like Jesus did. Amen. Yes. But see, we've grown up and we're, we were beggars because we were under the, Hi. We were under that mixed message. Well, I can't say that. I don't have the authority to speak healing. Only Jesus. Hey, I'm up. That's I'm doing kingdom. my thing. That's the kingdom. Right. You have the authority. So you have to walk in your authority. <laughs> Heather calls me. We lived up in Yukaipa, And we had a, a drainage dish that ran across the back of the property. Weirdest thing I ever saw. Well, it started raining really bad. And our neighbor had dogs. And so he had dammed up one side. Oh, no. So this big four foot <laughs> ditch had filled up with water is now flowing yeah. in down the bank into my yard. <laughs> I'm at work in Redlands, Heather's in North Ukaipa, and she says, Larry, the backyard is totally flooded and is two inches away from coming into the house. And I'm thinking, okay, it's going to take me a half hour to get home. And then what am I going to do? Call the fire department. I said, call the fire department, they'll give you sandbags. So they and did. they did. No they sandbags. pulled up and they dropped yeah. bags, yeah. empty yeah. bags on the driveway. Yeah. And I said, what the H is that? <laughs> Go out and throw that bag on the ground? <laughs> so so Heather being Heather, I'm on the phone with her. She walks outside and says, in the name of Jesus, I command this rain to stop. That's right. Amen. 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 And I'm going, Amen. she's so cute. Uh, Larry, the rain stopped. Amen. <laughs> yeah, it's receding now. Praise God. Now Praise it was Jesus. still raining everywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the weather report. Yeah, heavy rain, ninety percent price of rain in Ukraine right now. I'm looking at the top where there's a big, but our house no rain. Amen. Unbelievable. That's the That's yeah. Then the Lord touched the man next door and he goes, hey, it's raining. I blocked up that ditch. So he went out and took the boards out and all ran away. But the rain stopped yep. at a silly believer who said, you know what? They, they did it in the Bible. I can do it. That's right. That's Amen. Right. Amen. And she walked in. Yeah. As Jesus gave us authority. My, my office manager, she, she thinks I'm weird. I go, how are we doing today? She goes, well, we have two signups. I said, well, I asked for five, so you're going to have three more. Larry, it's only like a half hour. Till we close. Till we close. I said, that's all right. I go back into my office. I'm on the computer. I hear the little bell ring on the front door. Somebody walks in. Hi, can I help you? I need to sign my two kids up. <laughs> She's giving me totals for the day. She's about ready to lock up. Hey, is it too late? I need to sign up my kid. That's just childlike faith. Yes, yes. I didn't go outside and fast and Believe pray really it. hard. Yeah. I just said, you know what? God's got it. He yeah, knows what, he knows what right. we need. I'm just trusting him. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. So when we take that faith and put it in our garden, it grows up and becomes a tree and the birds of the sky and nestle the branches. In other words, it becomes mm -hmm. the biggest thing in your life is the authority of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. That's right. When you take that little Praise seed God. and plant it in your life. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. So if you want to be that giant tree, there are five things that God wants you to do. Read the word with discernment. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament is a great place to study and get revelation. But if you're a new Christian, get over into Paul's writings because he's talking to you as a Gentile Christian. Yes. Trust God. It says childlike trust. trust. Hey, Dad, can I have a cookie? Bam, he smacks me in the head. That never happened. If we go to God, we should expect something good and not something negative. Always. When you're under the mixed message, you always think God's going to smite you with his mighty smiter from heaven. Bam. Uh, yes. That's not who he is. We need to walk in his righteousness. Quit trying to be good. You are good. Amen. Quit trying to be worthy. Quit trying to be pleasing. Yeah, it. Now, don't get dumb. Once I understand who I am in Christ, that means I'm now going to be walking according to God. It doesn't mean I'm going to go out and go back to my old stuff. Right. Yeah. I didn't get a revelation of grace and say, hey, I can smoke crack again. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, no, that guy's dead. Amen. Right. Amen. I don't even have to think about that guy anymore. I don't get up every day and say, we're not going to smoke the pipe. We're not going to smoke the pipe. It's gone. <laughs> yes. Amen. Right. When you're getting up every day and say, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to do that, you're under the law. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. Have you ever gotten to say, today I'm going to be patient, I'm not going to get angry. And somebody runs into the side of your car 10 seconds later. Ah! Yeah, that's me. Jesus. God allowed a test to come. Mm -hmm. So I don't ask for those kind of things. I don't either. <laughs> I just allow the Lord to cleanse me with his fire. So I don't react like a silly man a in circumstances. Man. The fourth one, be led by the Holy Spirit. I had a man come in here and says, Larry, I heard God. He, I'm going to hell. I said, why do you think that? He says, oh, I, 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 I just, I've done the unpardonable sin. I said, okay. Who's telling you? I says, he says, I hear him. I hear the Lord tell me I can smell the sulfur said friend that's a demon mm -hmm. how long have you heard that voice my entire life i said that's a demon that came on you as a small kid yes yeah. really oh man i've been pumped by the devil oh, no. <laughs> so here he was thinking this voice he was listening to was the holy spirit and it was a demonic entity telling him how bad and unworthy he was yeah. Yeah. the last thing and this is the thing that we're really coming into today as a church is walk in the authority God has given us. Amen. I don't earn that authority, but it's, 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 I want to say a very fancy word, but I can't. Um, nah, forget it. I can't, I was going to, it's, yeah, I was going to say prego, but that wasn't the right word. It's, what? Sorry. Oh, you may think it's spaghetti. So, spaghetti. Too much spaghetti. <laughs> Wait, that was good. Uh, okay. Now we're playing charades. <laughs> so, I learned that I can speak healing over somebody. Yes, really. So now I do it. Yes. Amen. I start doing it. And you know what? I don't always see things. Because sometimes the person I'm praying over doesn't believe it. True. I'm praying for healing. Yeah, but what if it comes back? I will. Yeah, but that's pretty much where you're at. Larry, you've, you're, you've had four heart attacks. There's no hope for you. Oh, I have a brand new heart, you silly doctor. <laughs> and then they did the angiogram. And they go, dang, you got a new heart. How did it go from over here to over here? How did it go from this big to this big? And, you know, it's like, I believe and I speak. Amen. I believe, therefore I confess. Yes, amen. Now, see, the, the word of faith got a little crazy. I can just run around and say, I have a new car. I have a new car. It just shows up. That's stupid. Yes. <clears throat> I'm wise with my finances. 
The Lord showed me how to use my finances, and he's going to open a door for me to get a new car one day. That's, ah, that's wisdom. That's right. We, we thought God was like a magic genie lamp that we just rubbed him. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. It's like, you, no, you're silly. <laughs> so my job is to help you become that mighty tree that walks in the fullness of who God has made you to be. Amen. Amen? Amen. And I pray the day that we've laid a foundation, that you guys will start grabbing onto it and growing. But it's a process. Don't be hard on yourself that you're still stuck in some other mindset. You know, I, I spent 10 years getting rid of the old and putting the new in. The guy on TV who looked funny from Asia, who was talking about grace and... I swear I looked at Heather and I says, why are we listening to this gay Asian man? <laughs> God forgave me. So, he's talking about scripture and I get my Bible and I go, he's wrong, it doesn't say that. Oh, crud, it does. And he started blowing my theology up. And made me become a student of the word. I don't trust anything that comes out of the pie hole of any pastor. Right. Mm -hmm. I love them, but it's like, mm, okay. Got to check, check. I'm going to go back and look at Got it. Got check, check. I'm going to look at the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, is, what does that really mean? Correct. Yeah. Oh, that, that person there still is bleeding a little bit of the law into their stuff. Okay, okay, I see it. So, you're on a journey, and you're in a safe place. And you can learn why you're under the umbrella of God's righteousness. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, if you have a hard time worshiping God, a simple place to start. Lord, I thank you that you made me perfect in Christ. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that you restored me to relationship with you. I thank you, Lord, that your patience is renewed every day. As I try to learn on who I am. Yeah. And God says, come. Amen. You know, when you're a baby, he doesn't say, I put tennis shoes on, you go run down the street. He says, come here, come on. And you crawl, and you slobber, and you fall on your nose. And then one day you're walking. And one day you're running. That's a true mom. Mom's cleaning pacifiers before they give it to the baby. I just, I just like that going, that is, that's a mom. There's a pacifier on the ground. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I love it. See, that's how God does us. We fall down and go, oh, okay, let me clean you up. Amen. He does it. He does it. He does it. Amen. 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 <sighs> I can just go home right now. Hmm. Anybody need prayer for anything? Healing, deliverance, slap in the head. <laughs> I'm, I'm up for anything. Anybody have any questions they want to argue with me about? <laughs> I did that one time with somebody stood up in the back of the church. I'm not a sinner. It's like, I never said you were, lady. Everybody good? No. No. <laughs> R1 says I'm not good. R1 is very cool. Okay, I'll get you next. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, geez, she made a list. Oh, my. made a list. Can I make you get get free of something? No. no. So it has to be a, a partnership. Do you know, can I do anything outside of God? So in ministry, I can't do anything unless we're on the same page. I can give somebody a prophetic word. They go, oh, that's nice. Okay, so I've released it, but they have to receive it. So that is why I had a, I had a person come on Facebook and rebuke us for renouncing stuff. God, Jesus never renounced anything. I said, okay. We're going to do everything the way Jesus did. Heather, go dunk in the river three times. 
Let me spit in your eye. See, we get silly. And we're not being led by the Spirit to discern things. So you're going to renounce. Yeah. And I'm going to detach. Yeah. And then I'm going to cast it out. Amen. So whatever you're going to... Yeah, the Holy Spirit's definitely... I've been watching, you know, for uh, for you guys for years. But um, and so lately growing in the deliverance and watching you guys in the Holy Spirit. has been bringing to my attention things I want to renounce. Okay. And be free from. Okay. So, um, I want to renounce um, a spirit of divorce over my family. Okay. Yeah. When I was... Uh, a little girl, and I think that brought in um, a spirit of rejection. So I want to renounce the spirit of rejection, and I want to um, renounce any generational strongholds that came in mostly from my dad's side. Can we teach as you do this? Yeah. Okay. She said a spirit of rejection. Do you know that is almost everybody? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's everybody. And it's it's either tiny, piquito. Or it's giant okay so that is a good starting place for anybody go ahead I'm yeah sorry. amen definitely spirit of rejection I renounce the spirit of rejection and I renounce any um, other strongholds that that brought in um, I renounce rage generational curse of rage and anger and I want to renounce um, a spirit of control, which I believe is the Jezebel spirit, so I renounce the spirit of Jezebel. And um, I also want to renounce, when I was a little girl, there was, I was diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome. I was having twitching, uncontrollable twitching, and um, it was a wrongful diagnosis spoken over me, and I received it as my identity, so I detached that from my soul. <laughs> And um, with that OCD, and and then going into anything new age, I grew up under a spirit of age, I reject the spirit of new age, and Reiki that was done over me, yes. and it's anything new age that I played with, um, like Ouija board, and calling in evil spirits, and um, drugs, getting into drugs and weed, I renounce weed, um, I renounce crystals, um, yoga, Buddhism, um, and the spirit um, of trauma. When I was younger, I had an accident. And I went to the hospital, and I, and I had a fear of death. So I renounced the fear of death that crept in through that. This is my spiritual daughter. We don't talk about it, but she mm -hmm. just comes over. So, so think about it: a, a, a spirit of rejection, a spirit of control, yeah. trauma. Yeah. So when you have trauma, something's happened to you, you try to control so you don't get hurt. Yes. So you start controlling your situations and it can turn into a Jezebel where you then just become crazy in your control. It's because you're trying to protect yourself. Yes. Tourette's. Yes. Demonic. Yes. So at somewhere in your young life, a spirit came and attached itself to you. And I don't know all the bits and pieces about your younger years, but something happened, something transpired, things were in the house, and so that spirit tried to come on you. That's what it is, a familiar spirit. And a lot of times a familiar spirit will grow up with you and become a Jezebel spirit. And they start controlling. But the Jezebel can't come in unless there's a root of rejection. So if you've been violated somehow, and so many kids are, that's rejection. Where's mom and dad? This stranger came in. This other person came in and did something bad to me. Where were you at? And where's God at? So there's now that rejection comes in. And then the Jezebel comes in and says, yeah, that's right. God wasn't there with you. Your parents were, you know, and all of a sudden all this stuff is in your head. Okay. Yes. Make sense? Amen. Okay. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I detach my sweet sister from everything that she renounced. And in the power of Jesus Christ and the authority of Jesus Christ, I command every one of those spirits that has come into her life, they must exit right now. Every single one, every single one must come out of her right now in Jesus' name. Every single one, from the order that you came in to the order that you're going to come out. You're all going to come out right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now. 
in Jesus' name. Every single one of you lying spirits must come out of her right now. She's detached herself from you. You have no more authority in her right now. And you must come out. I don't have to scream. I don't have to holler. Everybody in the audience doesn't have to start praying in tongues. It's super loud. Okay. The enemy is responding to one person right now. And that's me. If you're going to pray, you're going to pray that she lets go. And you're going to pray that I'm going to hear the right thing to cast off. I detach you from the spirit that says you're not worthy. The spirit that says you must achieve and prove your worthiness. I cast that spirit off of her right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of rejection, every spirit of hopelessness, every lying spirit about her future, I command you to leave right now in Jesus' name. As these spirits and demons are leaving her, I speak the life of God back into her, that water of life back into her, to fill every nook and every cranny where the enemy has been taken away, that the love, the truth of the gospel, her new identity would fill every one of those spots right now. That right now she would just receive the love of God, yes. the peace yes. of God, the yes. acceptance of God. Yes. Yes. And she is free in Jesus' yes. name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now don't go away. I want to teach. Microphone have it. Okay. Now, are you just for you? I want you to tell you you grab it. I want you to tell me anything you felt. Like right now, like, right now, first off, you know, she's hotter than pain. Um, I just felt release. Okay. Anything moving around inside of you? Yeah. Okay. Like heat. Okay. Stomach, like okay. shaky. Anything in your throat or your mouth? Um, no, maybe, maybe a little bit right here. Okay. Okay. Like my legs feel <laughs> like really light. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to stand. Okay. A crazy thing happens when you get delivered of something, you get tired. Yeah. When you're done, it's like. Yeah, like okay. adrenaline. I feel like adrenaline is okay. like rushing through me. Is there a quiet in your head? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't realize how much white noise we have in our head yeah. until something's kicked out. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is your assignment. The enemy is going to come back and try to hit you with something. Mm -hmm. And you go, no. You know, we don't fight a thought with a thought. Right. Right. Our, 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 our spiritual battle is not, it's no. Amen. That's not who I am. Amen. That's not what I'm going to walk in. Amen. I don't believe that lie. I don't receive that lie. You yes. need to speak yes. to it. Yes. It says resist the enemy and he will receive. Right. It doesn't mean resist. Like, it's, it's, the word really means No. Right. Yeah. You have no place. Amen. Okay. Amen. Now you're, you're on your journey. Now, if you see anything else oh, pop up, yeah. then come back and we'll take care of that. Praise God. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. This morning, and I can't put any pressure on this foot. I don't know what's, what's happening here. Maybe it's the water. Okay. That's simple. Okay. A couple things you could. We got to be kind of like Sherlock Holmes, 
right? If I have a pain in my head and the next day my elbow hurts, and then a week later my hip hurts, guess what you've got? A spirit of infirmity that's just traveling around. Okay? You know, oh, somebody, it's like, okay, so now this is how we. The enemy is always trying to come and attack you. I have to clean out the two offices in the front tonight because they're putting carpet in the morning. And it's going to be just me. So I come to the church and all of a sudden my right foot's like, I can't step on it. And I'm going, oh, no, no, you filthy liar. <laughs> so get off. And I just shook my foot and I said, just get off of me. And yeah. it's gone. Uh, is it the foot of the knee? It's the foot. It's the foot. It's the ankle. Oh, it's the ankle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Father, right now I speak over my brother and I curse every lying spirit of infirmity that's trying to come against him. I detach him from the pain in his uh, ankle. I speak to that spirit and cast it off of him in Jesus' name. I speak total life and restoration of that ankle that it is strong, the ligaments are strong, the bones are strong, the cartilage is strong, and the muscles are strong, and that there is no pain in this foot right now in Jesus' mighty name. Don't go around saying your foot hurts anyway. Now you just let you just let me know when Hallelujah. when it's good. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I want to denounce the spirit of um it's, oh, this, I wanna push the button. Did I push the button? Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are we there? Is everything okay? Okay. okay, I want to denounce the spirit of rejection. I want to just denounce the spirit of self sabotage and failure. Okay. Now. Am I still on? I can hear you. Oh. I'm on? Okay. My job is not to just take what she takes as face value. My job is to listen and then go, Lord, is there anything else? Okay, so a spirit of rejection. What is a, a spirit of rejection will birth a, a few things. It'll birth an overachiever. It'll birth... I don't give a rat's butt anymore, and I'm just going to eat bonbons and watch TV. It can go to the two extremes, okay? It'll also produce in you, I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. There's something I did, and that's why I was rejected by a parent, a spouse, or I feel rejected by God. So it, that first one comes in, and then it starts branching into other things. Okay, so we're going to renounce rejection. We're going to renounce anything that says you're not worthy. We're going to reject that this happened to you because you were bad. And we're going to reject the lie that God did this to you. Okay. We're good? Okay. So in the name of Jesus, I detach my sister from all these things that she renounced. And every spirit that has come into her and attached itself to her because of these lies, I now cast you out in Jesus' name. I command you to come out of her, and I cast you to the dry places, and I bind you there in the unhappy places, never to return, and I declare that she is free. So every one of you foul things must come out of her right now in Jesus' name. That spirit of rejection, come out of her right now. Come out of her right now. Be lying spirit. She's accepted and she is blessed. Come out of her right now. You have no right here. You have no right in her right now. You come out. You come out of her right now. Sometimes God will ask you to take a step of faith and get rid of those. Okay? How you feeling? I feel like I don't. Okay, are you, where, where's, you're feeling your tummy, don't you? I can see it. Yeah, right. I feel it in my 
Just let me in my chest. Okay. 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 Sometimes they hide. Yeah. Like right now. Are they hiding? Yes. Are they hiding inside of me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But see, what they do is, when they manifest and you start getting all, kicking them out, then they go, they, they go, don't hide. Right. Okay? Every single spirit that has come on my sister through the things that she has renounced, you have no place. You're a lying spirit, and I command you to come out of them right now in Jesus' name. Get out, get out, get out. Come out of her right now. Come out of her right now. You have no place. You have no authority. You must leave her right now. As the fire of God burns that demon out, I just pour in the acceptance and the love of God right now that you are totally accepted, totally received, totally righteous, and totally loved in God's mighty name. It's a great exchange. Yes. Two things that you can see, man. You just keep on cooking. You're good. You're good. You can sit down and you can stay for whatever you feel comfortable. Two things that can manifest, and you look for this. Someone who you're trying to cast a demon off starts talking. That's a Jezebel that will manifest. Because it's going to try and take control. Okay? Or, and or, a person is getting free and they start going, Oh, no, I want all of you out of me. And they're very adamant. So you have to discern, is this the spirit trying to be hokey pokey here? Or is it really coming out? Okay? So that's where you have to grow when you hear the hear the spirit of God on what's truly manifested. Okay? Anybody else? Samurai warrior. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can I do it again? Uh, Can I do it? Make the choices. Uh, it's on? It's on. Oh. No. Um, so... Uh, when I was younger, about in my teenage years, I watched this movie called Lord of the Rings, and this creature, you know, golems in there, and I, I was just being stupid, and I was trying to, you know, imitate it and whatnot, but because I was in the mirror imitating this creature, my dad came in, and he's all like, are you demon-possessed kind of a thing? And I forgive my dad um, years later from this, but what I'm trying to get at is I feel like there was some kind of tie with it, because um, this creature will come and affect my dreams from time to time. Mm -hmm. And last night, he kept on trying to enter my dreams. But the cool thing about the dream is I wasn't afraid of him, you know? And I, I was even able to capture this little thing and kind of like, like, you know, show my parents, like, you know, this thing is bugging me and whatnot. But what I'm trying to get at is I really want to release that tie because I'm like, I, I don't, I'm tired of dreaming about this little stupid creature, you know? And I don't want anything to do with him or anything that might be affecting me because of that. I, I don't want him to have the right to keep him in my dreams. You know? the, the enemy has to work by contract. That's right. You have to say something. So yes, my life is horrible. Nobody loves me. My dad hates me. You know, whatever you start saying, the enemy comes right in and says, you know, that's true. Okay? So, little Gollum, you started imitating him. Did you say like, oh, I'm him in the mirror? It was, it was just kind of like trying to like repeat what he would say in the movie mm -hmm. and try to act him out and whatnot. Like, okay. this being stupid, you know? Okay. Like, so there was an innocent little thing, but the enemy came in and has attached itself to you. And so it attacks you in your dreams in that, that vision or that, that, that identity. Okay? 
So you want to be free of that? Yes. I do. Okay. So in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce. I renounce. Anything. Anything. That I made a covenant with. And everything that I made a covenant with. Playing with that. Playing with that. Little creature from the movie. From the little creature from the movie. I renounce it now. I renounce it now. In the name of Jesus, I detach Josh from any covenants he made, any open doors he made. Uh, with the demonic to that creature and I command every lying spirit that has come into Josh through that to come out of him right now in Jesus mighty name every lying spirit every lying spirit of his identity he is not a demon he is not demon possessed he is a child of God and we tear down every single stronghold of the enemy we speak clarity over his mind. We speak peace over his mind. And we command every one of those lying spirits to come out of him right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I just speak complete freedom, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In your life, Josh, something happened to you at five. Mom went back to work. You took it as rejection. And when that happened, the enemy came in five years old and started lying to you about all kinds of things. And as that lie grew, a rejected person looks for what? Something to make you feel better. It can go into perversions. It can go into addictions. It can go into food, games, pornography spending money it can be doing something where i want to feel good because i feel unloved and so probably a lot of that stuff is coming to you okay but every time something comes to your mind you come up and we renounce it you we're just digging down and getting all the dirt out of your basement okay what does god say about josh praise love what did what did he say he's made you to be a warrior ah a warrior is not he doesn't get beat up by the enemy the warrior beats the enemy that's what he's trying to tell you. Okay? Amen? Amen. Okay? Hallelujah. Hey, Blondie. Yeah. Smiley girl. Hi. How are you? You okay? Just okay? Yeah. Kind of, sort of. Okay. What's on your heart? saw slugs shoot out of my mouth. They represented something. I don't know what they represented. I saw snakes come out of my mouth. I saw a giant, you know, in your mind, if you ever had visions, it, it's like, it's you're kind of like over here and you're watching it happen to you. This big giant snake came out of my mouth. It's like his head is as big as my hand. And we're renouncing it. And two angels just materialized in the room and grabbed the snake and pulled it out and ran away. And I'm going like, holy... And then I saw a ball of snakes in my belly. And they shot out like a machine gun. I saw toads in my belly. Three big toads. And the Lord says, kick them out. <coughs> Cough them out. I saw three little people with robes. And all you could see is kind of like a little Navajo painting. All you saw was their little face. There was three of them hiding down here in the corner. I kicked those out. I saw a person stand up out of me that was translucent and run out through the wall. So in other words, there could be a whole bunch of critters that have come into you. And so every time we cast something off, we're digging down, we're digging down, we're digging down. So it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It just means, you know, Mike, do you always get the rats the first time? Mike is an official rat trap killer. He, he has... You know, he collects rats. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. So when you have an infestation, an Im 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 thank you. You know, when you lift up something and the cockroaches run, and you go, oh, okay, I got all those guys. And then you go to the bathroom and you're like, ah, and you realize they're everywhere. 
Okay? And so this just means that there's just more stuff that needs to come out. Yes. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. I see a spirit of depression on you a lot. Yeah. Yes. A spirit of hopelessness. Doris Day. Whatever will be, will be. Yeah. What a depressing song. That sucked. Does God want you to stay in a in a hurt or broken condition? Okay. So come over here. So I have seen you change so much. When she first came in, I thought I was looking at a little stone statue. There was absolutely no emotion on her face. I would tell a good joke and she'd go. <laughs> I get an eyebrow. I mean, not even a chuckle. So I see a lot of stuff has come off of you. So a, a spirit of depression is going to be attached to some lie about hope or your future. Okay, so what do you think, in your secret, secret little thoughts, what do you think is never going to happen to you? What's some dream that you think is just never going to happen? How about a relationship? Ever think about that? Yeah. yeah. See? God's going to whisper in my ear. So if you think that you're so jacked up that who would ever love me? Or how could I have somebody who loves me just the way I am? And so now there's a depression that's coming on you because you think you're destined to be alone. That's why I was 40 years old smoking a crack over on Genevieve or wherever I was at. It's a hopelessness. And the enemy kind of to come in and say, this is... This is it. This is as good as it gets. This is all you're getting. It's a lie. Okay? So renounce hopelessness. Renounce the lie that I will never have a partner who appreciates me and loves me like God does. And the lie that you're going to have to do this for the rest of your life. Okay? Those three things. So you renounce those. Ever having a partner? Or this is my destiny for the rest of my life? Ah, so I detach my sister from those things that she's renounced. And every lying spirit that has come into her and is reinforcing those lies and has built up a stronghold, I command every single one of them to come out of her right now in Jesus' mighty name. Now, one of the things I notice about you when, when I talk to you, this little thing goes locked down. You know that? It, it, it happens. You're talking to somebody, a lot of times they leave out of your mouth, sometimes. And so I'm talking to somebody. I've even seen somebody do this. <laughs> grab their jaw. So I, personally, when somebody prays for me, I just keep my mouth open like a guppy fish. Because <laughs> I want it out. <laughs> and, and if I feel a desire to cough or blow, I'm, I'm doing it, okay? So whatever you feel led to do. So in Jesus' name... Every one of those spirits has attached itself to you through those things you renounce. I command them to come out of you right now in Jesus' name. Not later today, right this moment, at the count of three, all of you must come out of her right now. One, two, three. Come out of her right now. Come out. Release her and leave right now in Jesus' name. Come out. I can see you guys. Come out of her. Come out of her. Is there a, a, a chuggling going on in your tum tum? You don't know? Do you believe there's any more in there that need to be cast out? Okay. Do you release them? You want them out? Okay. I want you to <laughs> cough them out right now. <coughs> Has God ever asked anybody to take a step of faith? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's a step of faith. I'm not trying to manufacture anything here, but sometimes we're, we need to show, okay, you're out. All you little, so, you know, whatever, get out of me. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I was just, I came up here because when I was sitting down there, I just felt sad, angry, like a victim. I just not angry. Wait, wait, wait. Now you said victim. Yeah. That's a whole other realm. That's something that comes into rejection all of a sudden. I am the victim. 
Have you ever met somebody? You know what happened to me when I was seven years old? And my guy, and it's like every time you see somebody, you rehearse this thing that happened to you. So I'm going to renounce victimhood. So you renounce victimhood. I am not a victim. And I don't want any victimhood on me. And I detach myself from it. In the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of victimhood that lies to my sister and says she's a victim and not a child of God, I command them to come out of her right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Don't look at me. Just come out. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the monkeys. You have no place on her. She has a covenant with Almighty God through Abraham, through Jesus Christ. You have no authority over her. Every one of you must come out of her right now in Jesus' name. What are you thinking right now? That's wrong. See, I'm praying for somebody, and inside the enemy has such a stronghold that's going, it's not going to happen. He has no authority. And so now you're believing the lying voice more than my voice. Okay, but you don't fight a thought with a thought. Remember I said that? So you're going to need to say, get the hell off of me right now. Amen. <laughs> get to the curb. <clears throat> Doesn't want you to say that, does it? There's a resistance right now. See, there's, when you come up, I, I, I love you dearly, but I always see a resistance on you. Mm -hmm. And that's the demonic in you that's saying, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. So you have to let go of it. You have to say, you know what, Lord, I don't feel like it, but I believe it. I don't, I don't see it, but I believe it. Your power is in your word. Speak, 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 young lady, speak. I want all of them out. Say it like you mean it. Got to get bold. Got to get bold. I'm done with all you lying monkeys. Get out of me. <laughs> Father, I just speak over this stronghold right now in Jesus' name. And I tear it down. It has no place. And, and the lies my sister is believing, I cast that spirit out that has built this lie about she's destined to stay in this place and stay in this position. I curse it and I command it out of her right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I say that she has the mind of Christ. She has the mind of Christ and she does not listen to the enemy anymore in Jesus' name. God looks at you and he says, you're beautiful. You're wonderful. And I have a destiny for you that's way beyond what you see right now. You have to embrace. You know why sometimes God gives you a prophetic word? So you can hang on to it. Yes. And you can use that to beat up the lies of the enemy. Yes. Did you ever have a dream as a kid for something, some career, some something? For, for a long time I wanted to be like a, a cinematographer. Okay. But it's transformed. Okay. What do you want to do? Artsy fartsy. God says, I put in you dreams. And if you grab on to the dream that I have given you, I will show you how to manifest it. So you need to grab on to that dream and let go of the lies. See, the lies are keeping you stuck. The lies kept me on Genevieve eating Rocky Road ice cream and smoking crack for 20 years, 10 years. But I had to step up day and say, nope, I'm done with this. I give up doing it my way. I'm not going to listen to the enemy. And he started taking me on a journey. You need to be proactive. So there needs to be some, some militant of you of stomping your foot and saying, no, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. I, have, I have enemy come to me constantly about things I've been set free of. Now, Heather went to L.A. This is as soon as that Heather got in the car and drove away. Hey, you can go buy a gallon of ice cream. Shut the hell up. I ain't listening to you anymore. You're a liar. Yeah, but 
it doesn't hurt. Kick him to the curb. And you know, and whatever your stronghold used to be, go watch TV, go go on something, look at something you should, or whatever, go buy something you don't have the money for, whatever it is, you have to stand up and say, no, that is not who I am. Right. Amen. So there, there's, the enemy has made you docile. And you need to step up and say, no, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. Happen. See, there was there was an offense that tried to come in this morning. The Lord says, you need to get up and stop that bad boy right now. I saw it. It wasn't right. It wasn't right what was said. It wasn't right how it was handled. And it was it was pressure on one made them say something. And it was it was it was not done in love. And so the Lord says, get up and grab that right now. Don't let that bad boy build up a stronghold. Yeah. So you need to be proactive. You need to, you know what? Start dreaming. If you, if you make music, go go do whatever it is that that thing is. <clears throat> Start doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I just do it. Yeah, it depends. Okay? I'm free. In Jesus' name. I have no monkeys. The monkeys are not allowed here anymore. Amen. Amen. And you just get proactive. And then every time that comes up, that. <laughs> You just say, mm, out, 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 out. Mm -hmm. Amen? You good? You want to wrestle? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Love you. You are precious. You're wonderful, okay? Love you. Anybody else before we shut this down and go home? <sighs> so we had two ladies come to our house last night for dinner. And I find out they're both... What's your name? And I say, I say, Rebecca. And they both turn around and say, yes. So they had nicknames. They met each other in college. I said, oh, no, R1, R2. <laughs> so there's R1, there's R2. So how can I help you? So I've got some things I want to renounce. But as I'm sitting there, I'm feeling like a pulsing in my lower back. And I'm feeling nauseous. And so I brought this in case I threw out. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're high class. I, I hope I don't throw up. We have I'm willing to make it. We're prepared here. So, um, I, have, I know I have a spirit of rejection. Um, I have a spirit of control. Um, I have a spirit of hurt, uh, shame, religion. Do you see how they're woven together? Mm -hmm. and, and, and where does rejection come from? Rejection can come from a parent. That's the first thing. Either an absent parent or an emotionally absent parent. Yep, both. Then, if there's been a violation, if something has been done to you inappropriately, that sets in a big rejection of spirit. A divorce. And he comes in and says, Dad didn't like you, that's why he left. And then all of a sudden, it's my fault for the divorce, or it's my fault that mom's not, you know, whatever it is. And so the enemy starts bringing those things in, and then you try to control the, the, to, to, to save yourself. You try to control it, and then anger comes in there because you don't know how to fix it. Anyway, I disrupted you. Go ahead and say what else you had on your mind. Uh, there's, a, um, there is a spirit of infirmity and imbalance too. Um, I struggled with a, a sickness, and I had to do a strict diet as a kid. And there was rejection with that. I couldn't have pizza or ice cream at birthday parties, and um, there's still some lingering symptoms there. But I just I want, I want it out. I want it out. Mm -hmm. All of it. Okay, go down your list and just formally say, I renounce A, B, C, D, or whatever. I would do, I renounce infirmity, imbalance, Jezebel, overachieving, people pleasing. Oh, another one. Okay. Oh, we're good. <laughs> Rejection, failure, doubt, confusion, giving up, fear, worry, anxiety, frustration, fear of offense, chaos. Lactose? Okay, that's demonic. That's pure demonic. Pure, pure demonic that comes into you. And then the doctor, see, doctor comes along. I love doctors because they're all doctors. These are all doctors. Just doctors. We've got doctors everywhere. Doctors say, oh, look, we can find in a blood test of this. Yeah, they do. But what caused that? Yeah. 
the, see, we don't, we usually don't understand that a spiritual thing can happen and it can manifest in a physical thing. Right. And so we keep treating the physical, but the spiritual never gets taken care of. And we don't know why we're not free of this and, you know, linger in this and whatever, okay? In Jesus' name, I detach you from all the things that you renounced. And every spirit that has come in and attached itself to you. See, they're already coming out. See, they're already freaking out. Every single demon that has attached itself to you through these lies and hurts, I command in the name of Jesus to come out of you. Every one of them. Every one of those lies. Every one of those spirits must come out of her right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. There's no time for games. Just come out of her right now in Jesus' name. Every one of you. Every one of you come out of her. Every one of you come out of her right now. Come out. You have no right. You have no place. Spirit of Jezebel, you must come out of her. Spirit of control. Spirit of rejection. Every spirit of infirmity, she has de de denounced you and detached herself from you. And you must come out of her right now in Jesus' name. Now, what you're not seeing is her mouth is open and she's moving. And things are coming out. Things are coming out. Hallelujah. Things are coming out. You know, she, things are coming out. Demons come out through crying, coughing, breathing, spitting up. Uh, they can come out all kinds of different ways, but the majority I see them come out of the uh, out of the mouth. So every one of you must come out of her right now. Every single one of you, from last to first, come out of her now in Jesus' name. somebody behind you so you just let happen whatever needs to happen okay you're good you're good you're good just let him come out let him come out let him come out you're all right let him come out Because the story was horrific. It wasn't like, it was like, oh dear God, that actually happened, okay? And so when things like that happen, you either don't care about anything, 
or what anybody says, or you're going to put a, a mask on and say, I need to look good in this because I don't want anybody to see the hurt in my belly. And so nobody coerced him, but we were praying, and he did it willingly. He came up, and this is what I saw. He, Mike comes up and says, I want to renounce this and this, and he said a few things, you know, some personal things, and he let it out. And Heather started praying, and he just went, and then he didn't move. I thought he died. I thought we killed him. He was just, so now, in the natural, he's out. He ain't moving for 25 minutes. He's just there. A lump of hamburger. Yeah. In his mind, he just went and visited Dad in heaven. Hallelujah. See, is that just so cool? But see, we have to get over ourselves. Yes. yes. And go down and have a 30-year-old kid who doesn't have near the understanding I do and lay hands on me to give me an impartation. Wow. Sometimes you need to eat a little humble pie. Yeah. And, and what God is doing with her is blowing my mind. She was in Dubai last week. Yeah. She was in another foreign country the other week. And these are people calling up and says, look, I need you to come out. I'll pay for you. Every week she's flying somewhere in the United States. Guess what? Nobody has called me up and said, will you come to my church? Okay. The power. We had the gospel, but we didn't have the power yet. And once we embrace that power, guess what? People coming, people are coming. See, I'm looking in this church. How many of you people have not been here for more than, haven't like, started coming like in the last two or three months? A whole bunch of you. So where's the people from 10 years? Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Kirby's, Mary Jo. Thank you, Jesus. Mike and Marlo. So it's the power of God working that draws people and then we can tell them the truth of the gospel yes, yes so they're seeing the truth and then they're seeing it manifest if i tell you god loves you but there's no power and nothing's happening you go like oh yeah that's nice but why do i feel like dog poo poo yeah 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 anybody else i saw you sneak in <laughs> sorry <laughs> Oh, and let the party begin. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed children of God. Amen. Highly favored. Love Look at you. You're a wild one, aren't you? <laughs> Hi, guys. How is you? So, I just want to share um, anything that could be generationally passed down. I had a very difficult pregnancy with them. I struggled with Give you something wrong. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And especially him, he wouldn't. He wasn't growing in the womb. They were born two months early. Okay. We're having a lot of behavioral issues at home, so I just want prayer. Now, you say, but it's a child. What did they do to get a demonic attached to them? Nothing. Nothing. They just show up. My grandson at two and a half was talking to a demon. And it was causing him to write on the walls. And we went and spoke to him, and he sent it away, and all his behavior changed just like that. Now, if they're if they're too young to truly understand, we have authority. You can renounce it, and we can cast it out. Hi, buddy. How you doing? I like your haircut. Can I have some of your hair? <laughs> so I, I can already see when they came in. I saw stuff. Okay, and it's not necessarily something you did it could be generational yeah. it could be something you dabbled in as a kid it could be the tarot cards the ouija board uh new age crystals it could have been whatever you could have been raised in a hippie camp you know who knows i, I don't know okay and so um <clears throat> a spirit of death tried to come on you when you were pregnant and tried to kill these boys. Okay, now why why would the enemy want to do that? Because you have a calling and anointing. Okay, and, and you know so the I don't know how the enemy knows that, but I mean, why would my mother reject me? What a, what a wonderful guy I am. She said I want a girl. Get out of here. So anyway, okay. 
So can I pray for you guys? Yeah. yeah? You want some prayer? Yeah. Say yes. High five. Can you do a high five? Hello. Good job. How are you? They're so blessed. <laughs> I want you to stand over here in front of the chairs. I don't want you to fall. Hold him or don't. Yeah, just just both of you stand in front of the chairs. And if you got to go down, just sit down. Yeah. Was there anything that you grew up in that was winky? Uh, I didn't know my father. Okay, so there's rejection. rejection. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my mom had multiple marriages. Okay. Uh, you want me to hold you? I'm anointed. You want, you want to come over here? <laughs> all right. Uh, say, all right. I'm taller than you. I just got a cramp in my leg. Is that a lion monkey? Okay, so rejection. And then multiple men came to the house. Without prying, was there anything that maybe inappropriate ever happened to you? Uh, I was told that I was molested when I was two. Boom, there you go. So now we have all the monkeys coming in on you. Okay? And so what they'll do is this comes along and they try to jump on the kids. And I don't I don't know anything about your background. I, there might have been some weird stuff there. So that's what this is. This is a death trying to kill your offspring mm. and, and to destroy you. So I want you to renounce rejection. Reject uh, renounce anger and renounce the violation that was done. Okay, renounce, you do that. I renounce rejection, I renounce anger, and I renounce the violation that was done. In Jesus' name, I detach my sister from these things, and every demonic spirit that has come into her through these hurts and pains, I command it to come off of her right now in Jesus' name. Every lying spirit of hurt and pain and rejection and not good enough, I command it to come off of her right now in Jesus' name.
very fact that you came down, you came to my house and let us minister to you guys last night means I'm ready. If the enemy comes in and lies to you that you can't or it's never going to happen, then it's not going to leave. Okay? It has to be where I'm done. I want all the I want all the monkeys out. Amen? Father, I thank you for your precious saints. I thank you for your anointing and your wisdom that is beyond anybody else's man's wisdom. I just speak a blessing over this congregation. Those watching online, I speak the peace of God, freedom, and the revelation of truly who they are in Christ. And Lord, I just declare that the favor of God and the grace of God goes with them wherever they go. Bless them in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, Amen. Amen.